My name is Cruz uh, from Rialto, originally born in Pomona, and what I do is uh, I rap. That's what I do. I was originally uh, born in Pomona, always the youngest of cousins, so when my cousins would go off and uh, I couldn't ride because I was just so, oh, I couldn't go anywhere. I was still little. They would always leave me in their rooms and everybody had tapes and CDs. So I had a bunch of guy cousins on both my mom and my uh, dad's side. And I like, I just sit there. They would show me the music. They would show it to me. And when they take off, I'd just be putting it on repeat, listening. And honestly, it, it just started with the infatuation of music. Because beforehand, all I heard was alternative rock and roll. And when I was like kind of getting around my cousins more and more and being able to hear and understand the different styles of music, you know what I mean? Because my mom's was an 80s head and my pops was an alternative rock head, but my cousins was putting me on game. They was putting me on the Wu-Tang and then the Too Short. Too Short was big. I don't know what it was. Too Short was big for me. I like Too Short a lot. DJ Quick. Yeah, so doing that, 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 it started as an infatuation. I wasn't trying to rap off the bat, you know what I mean? I was just really in love with the music. My favorite thing that really I, I really like sit with, it was a, my cousin took off one time and I was about 12, 12 years old. And they, him and my sister, and they went to go to a party. And he left me in the room with this DJ Quick documentary. And it was like, it was wild. It was just like when Sugar Free, it was when Sugar Free was popping and they were like getting together and they were just making their Pomona movement and stuff like that. So I was sitting there and I was just watching this DVD and I'm just like soaking up game and like see DJ Quick, he's an artist like don't get he's an artist all the maximum but he's a real person though too like in that documentary uh he wasn't trying to be that hard rapper all the time like he was like hey like I gangbang I do what I do I make music but I'm still human at the end of the day so I kind of like I was really intrigued by DJ Quick as him doing that gangster rap but still being comfortable to be who he is you know what I mean and then, of course, Sugar Free in my hometown Pomona. So it was just like, it was already going. So it is what it was. That's what's up, why, man, why you bullshitting, baby? <laughs> when I go to these events right now, and I see people supporting each other in the purest of forms. You know what I mean? In the purest of forms. Just like from the person who's barely jumping on for the first time to the veteran. You know what I mean? Um, in those good communities, they support one another. And I like that because honestly, like there ain't a lot of people showing up all the time. Most of the time it's just us. Like it's just the artists and there's a room full of artists. You know what I mean? And the last couple of events that I've been to, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, it's chill. No, nobody was tripping. No bullshit. People are hot. They do what they do. But uh, overall, I think it's just the support. And I think it's just bonding with one another. It, it's people talking about their problems without the psychologist, dude. Like that's really what it is. Uh, that's, that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. I think this is a really interesting time because there's been individuals like the Noah James and the Curtis Kings that have done things then, and, and moved around and, and, and put it on, you know, have done something for this area. Um, but there's a lot of people untapped. Untapped, that's what it is. The people are untapped. Um, the sounds are different. The sounds are different. You do have the boom bap underground kind of situations going on. And you do got the MC with the intellect. And then I see that. But then I also see a lot of people with different flavor. The upbeat. It, it's, I don't know how it is. San Bernardino kind of got its own slang too. So everybody, it, it's a little bit different. That's a, it's a true melting pot. Because when we, and the funny thing, this is what I love about the IE real quick. Because you could tell any, I'll be like, I'm from Rialto. They're like, where's that? I'm like, San Bernardino. Oh, you're from San Bernardino. So it's crazy because it's just like, they just, it's everything down there is San Bernardino. Like we're all San Bernardino. But it's funny though, because there's different flavors. You got a Rialto flavor. I, I know people in Rialto. Uh, Fontana cats, you know, true San Bernardino cats, and then you got Riverside cats too. Those are all different areas and different genres, and, and that's a lot of space. There's a lot of space and a lot of different experiences going on out there. And like, even with the migrating situation, it's like everybody from LA to San Bernardino, LA County to San Bernardino County, uh, where you land is where you land. But I remember being there and meeting people from everywhere in LA, from, you know, like Watts, Inglewood, Long Beach. I don't. I don't remember a lot of Compton. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't. I don't remember a lot of people from Compton moving out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, even La Puente, even the Mexican areas and stuff like that. So we all just sitting there and just like, are we? It, there was a weird kind of situation. It's like, 
are we really from San Bernardino? Are we migrant? And because there's really true cats that were born, raised San Bernardino. So when we're moving over, it's like, it's a different situation. Do we still feel like we got the LA County vibe? Or it, it was just, it was a different kind of, it was different. It was really different. But the beauty of it is like, for me, I was raised in Pomona and most of the people I see, no offense to anybody, but we're Mexican. So when I get to Rialto, I'm walking outside. It's the first day to play. We're in the suburbs now. It's like it's a little bit different. Okay, boom, we jump out. And I got a, a young black man sitting in front of me like, what's cracking? You shoot the ball? I'm like, fuck it. Let's do it. Like, like hey, you catch, you skate, we ride bikes, we do, we do it all. And that kind of interaction, see, and that's when I all, when I was in Pomona, it was a lot of West Coast. But when I got around my homie, his name's Steve, he was like, outcast. You know, what about what you know about this? It's like, Showing me the South, the ludicrous and other stuff. It's like, yeah, he, he was, his father and his people were from L.A. too, but he had already been out there, so the exposure was different. We were grabbing, I feel like people were grabbing things differently, you know what I mean? Um, especially, I wasn't going to hear that if I didn't move uh, to Rialto, not that fast. I don't feel like I would have heard it that fast or been on to it or, you know, it's a, it's a West Coast mentality. It'll always be a West Coast mentality no matter what it is, but... Uh, San Bernardino is just, it just has a different vibe. It does, but it, it's positive. All around is positive. You know what I mean? My dream is hot and cold. Sometimes it's on fire and sometimes it's not. I did music and I would go hard, try to go hard and push back, re-strategize. So uh, I wouldn't say. I don't know. I need to start going harder. That's why I'm here. <laughs> but uh, definitely, uh, family. Family always supports no matter what. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's just friends around me too, people that I rapped with before. Uh, uh, my homeboy Anonymous. Yeah, actually, you know what? There, there, there was a when maybe four years back we had a studio in Monta Vista and uh, Mon well Montclair Borderline Pomona, and we had uh, Anonymous recording there, Grizzle recording there, which is a friend of mine produces beats and stuff like that. Uh, Hope. Um, and just a couple, like artists would come through just from this area and and I think right there we built our own studio and and that's why I recorded a lot of music that I'm going to be pushing out later but I think it was just a when I think about who supports it's just the the fellow artists that I grew up with so definitely anonymous grizzle and, and hope for sure we've um uh, we've interviewed anonymous and, and hope yeah like, just hearing their stories and where they came from and stuff is just wild and there, there's another like dude uh yeah, Anonymous is the home. Anonymous is like my little brother, man. He's my big. That fool tall as hell. Though. That's 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 my homeboy right there. Yeah. Uh, even with the track that I'm about to push right now, I'll be sending it to him. Like, hey, dude, what do you think? And he'll be like, you want the real truth? I'm like, don't be trying to, you know, don't don't gas me now. Like, tell me, like, okay, the song and the concept might be on point, but he's my man. That's just like, okay, if we're really gonna listen, you know, you might want to take this down a couple points and push this up. And what do you think of so? I call him because he's very critical because he, he levels beats and stuff. So I call him and he hits me with the truth. And I'm like, okay, I hear you. I Because, you know, well, he's younger than me. He's definitely younger than me. But at the same time, at, with his artistry, I just respect his ear. Mm -hmm. I really respect his ear. So I'm like, you know, or like I'll shoot it to Hope. or Like us three will shoot stuff to each other and be like, okay, what do you think? And we're all in different areas like... Anonymous just moved out to the San Bernardino area. Hope is still out here in this Pomona area. And, like, I'm in the Rialto area. So it's all email. But uh, I think we all just support each other a lot, dude. It's pretty cool. That's it's good stuff. stuff. Or were you guys, like, like uh, I don't want to say... Not a group. group. No, yeah. no, not a group. It was just individuals like, that were going to a studio and using an engineer there. <laughs> so we're just kicking it. And, you know, all of us got engineered by this one dude who was Grizzle. And, uh, yeah, so we, we're just forming relationships and listening to his shit. And that's the cool thing is when you have an umbrella, like, I get, I don't, I don't hang out here. I don't know what this is like. But when you got a 24-7 umbrella where dudes and artists are rolling up, and not too many, just a few, but you're bouncing ideas off each other. Oh, this guy does this this way, or he hits the mic like this, or when he does his melody, he takes it this way. You're learning from each other. And I think that's why I respect those dudes a lot because we bounced a lot of music off of each other. And it would always be funny though too. You'd be uh, chilling in the studio and roll up, and then you just look at them like, okay, boom, hit play, and then everybody's kicking. And of course, people are smoking and drinking, and they're like, 
So it's either you get the like, oh damn, this shit is hard. This shit is harder. You get like, come on, bro. Like, you, and you were getting judged, bro. You were getting judged. So like, it was we would support each other and we would tell each other the truth of like what sounds good. And honestly, there was like no hatred there. It was just a you know uh, trying to point stuff out to each other to get better. And honestly, there is a couple songs. Actually, yeah, there is a couple songs that we need to do. Yeah, my man, uh, Cash Black. He's uh he's right here in Pomona as well. We got some songs. I got a song. We got we got a cool little song actually. So we're gonna have to bring that one out the works, dude. Oh, straight yeah, up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That that that's Hope Anonymous, me and Cash Black. It, it's a little uh, it's funky. It's real funky. It's funky for three Mexicans. It's real funky. <laughs> I think at the moment, like when everybody starts off, it, it was more a self-reflection. Um, for example, uh, I had a line when I was barely starting, we're all born for death at the moment of creation. I remember that. It was more on the, it just writing. I wanted to write. I wanted to be metaphorical. I, I like the thought. I like being in my own head. That's where it started. And then after kicking it with so many people and uh, me and my friend Grizzle, the way it was is he would make instrumentals and uh, we would knock out three songs a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, that's how I got to the point that I'm at now. And, and it was never like, oh, I don't want to get on this beat because this is not my style. No, it was like when, when you're rolling with that dude, it's like, hey, we're going to do a party song. We're going to do this kind of song. We like, it don't matter. We're going to do it. Because if you want to do it, you better know how to do it all. So that's where that came from in the middle of it. And then now, I would just say it's definitely like, I guess you could say it's definitely more commercialized. It really is. More but I just, say, yeah, say commercialized. it's commercialized because um, just the way it sounds, people are like, uh, when I play it for people, they're thinking like, oh, I'm going to hit them with like some underground, like super underground stuff. And I do get that look. It's just like, I don't know. The melody, is like, I'm putting more melodies into it instead of just like raw rap. It's, it's, it's getting to a point where it's like, it would be nice to sing a whole song, you know, get there. Uh, eventually, I would like to get there, you know what I mean, to be able to sing a song. Um, but you got to use the low key, you know. So I don't got that yet, but we're, we're training it. But now it's just, I guess it's just say it's commercialized because it has melodies. More melody based, I guess you could say, even within the verses as well. So the funny thing is, before I get into the studio or before I'm going to do something or before I commit to doing like a song, because um, now it's different. Before I used to write a song a day, now I'm just like, maybe uh, I'm writing a song once a week. Uh, so it gets a little bit more time than it used to. Um, but I was talking to somebody and I was telling them, look, like before I go in and, and do something, I like to listen to a lot of shit. I listen to oldies, I listen to the rock. Because they're all, it, no matter what it is, it's just people and an experience. It's experiences, that's all it is. That's all it is. And you're getting people's tones. And like, if you're not listening to different kind of music, then you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're going to be stuck in one situation. Like, okay, it's not, t I don't think it's technically biting to be like, okay, there's an idea there. The idea progresses with the next individual and it changes, it alters. We're supposed to grow. It is what it is, but we're not technically, I, I don't dig on actually taking words from somebody. You, we can't take words from people or, or sayings. We can't do that, but we can take the idea of things that, and, and be like Bruce Lee and make it essentially your own. You know what I mean? And we, we got to try to do that because um, there's a lot of experiences out there and then there's melodies and there's just more than one way to approach a song. There's so many different ways to approach a song. You could put three artists in three different rooms and have them record to the same beat. You're not going to get the same outcome. You're not. And that's the beauty of art. You know what I mean? But at the same time, though, too, everybody deserves a voice. Everybody deserves to say what they want to say. And sometimes... Old ideas are still good ideas, and history tends to repeat, so, you know, why not listen to some old school stuff, you know what I mean? Why not listen to the oldies? Why not listen to the alternative? You know, you're missing out on some great shit if you ain't listening to Kurt Cobain. You, you messing up now, like, you you messing up. And, like, that's the cool thing about, un, like, you know, the underground or people who, like, like hip-hop. Um, I like seeing the those kind of people, like, they're over there rocking the chucks and the, the like, you know, that grunge style, but they're rapping. And they're right. It's like, okay, you know what I mean? Where do you think that came from? You know, he's like, he looked like he got a grunge feel. He's probably listening to some music. And then, but the way he could communicate musically is rapping. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's where it gets really interesting in like the Inland Empire. It gets really interesting because there's a lot of different walks of life. I remember being in high school and going to like um, 
backyard like rock shows, hardcore shows, mm-hmm. and that was a hardcore big shows. that that was a big scene too. You know what I mean? Honestly, like uh, I learned to fall in love with somebody banging out the guitar and doing double pedal. You know what I mean? Like, hey, that. It's an energy, you know what I mean? The, if you're not seeing different types of music, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're not listening, you're messing yourself up because there's so much to learn, dude. The pro is being able to express yourself the way you want to express yourself and not only just expressing yourself but getting shit off of your chest. It's a, For me, it, yeah, you just, sometimes you just got to dump it. You got to dump everything because you can talk to people and then people are gonna talk to other people, and then you're just gonna have rumors when you could just spread the rumor yourself over song. <laughs> Cause they gonna hear it anyway, so you might as well tell them. It's a uh, it's cool to do that because when you do stuff like that, people get a glimpse, and you know, you can see, you know, once your Instagram's on a you know a, a business account, who's interacting, who's watching, who's listening. So uh yeah, no, you could tell people, you could just tell people how it is. That's how I feel right now. I love that. The con hoarding. My con is hoarding because I got so much music and I'm like, dude, and then like sometimes I just don't feel like I have the time. Sometimes I just want to live my life. Sometimes I just want to wild out. Sometimes I just want to drink. And then you sit there and this is where the con comes in. You sit there and you're like, fuck, I got all this music. And then you show people and they're like, oh, you get down like that. That's cool. You should be doing more with it. And you get, and then you're like, damn, like I'm lazy. That's the con is you realize how, how much work it takes and I, I get you. You realize though too, it's just hoarding and 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 self doubt and all kinds of different things come up. You know what I mean? Because, dude, you gotta have some fucking balls. I don't know if we're a lot of cuss. We're, you gotta have some fucking balls to be my age and be like I'm rapping right now. Cause you know what? Half of the people on Instagram are just taking pictures of their highlight moments. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, well, I'm fucking rapping right now. You know what? Can anybody be honest with themselves like that? Honestly, that's a hard pill to swallow, even for yourself sometimes. So I'm like, hmm? So that's a great question. It's a very great question. Pro, get it off your chest. Tell people how you feel. Con, the, just no, being, putting in that work and being underrated and not following up. That's, that's the con for me as an individual. Everybody has dreams and aspirations to do big things, you know what I mean? It'd be nice to get a little recognition for what I'm doing. But at the same time, though, too, I'm just trying to have fun and be consistent. So hopefully you guys see me more. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, don't get mad at your first 50 songs. <laughs> don't get mad at your first 50 songs. And if, if you can't record 50 like that, don't get mad at your first 10. Don't get mad at your first five. It takes time to learn how to write a verse. It takes time to learn how to come up with a chorus and taking big thoughts. You want Everybody wants to say a lot, but we have to minimize it down. So we got to weed all these extra words out. Take your time with yourself. Be kind to yourself and just keep going for it. If you, if you want to make music, then just keep going for it. Who cares what anybody else thinks? And you're going to get your feelings hurt. People aren't, Everybody's not going to like your shit. It is what it is. Not everybody's going to like you, you know? And that's just, it might not even be your music. They just might not like you. And like, that's the funny thing is like, when you're letting those things go on in your head and you're just trying to do music, you got to remember that people don't like to see somebody trying to do something. They don't. And whether, you know, everybody laughs at all the rappers that are out these days. Shit, when I pushed my card, last time I was in Vegas, I was pushing these little cards that I had that you scan and it takes you to my, my whole situation. I was like, hey, you know how everybody's trying to be a rapper? They'd be like, yeah, well, I'm one of them. Here you go. Here's my card. And then so, like, I would I'd pitch it as a joke, you know, honestly. But if you're making fun of yourself and you're ready, if you can accept that and have that kind of funny bone, you'll be all right and develop that funny bone quick because people are going to look at you crazy when you say you make music. They're going to look at you crazy. They might not even let you show them a song, you know what I mean? So you got to be prepared for that. Don't take shit personal. Just keep going. Keep trying. That's it. Ooh. Yeah, 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 look, yeah. She said, I love you, baby. I tell the chicks the same, same, same. Look, when I ride through, I slide through. Little mama coming up on my side view. I'm good with numbers, let me get your mad. Have a good time and run it back. Honey stacks, pop a pill. Take a shot, smoke that kill. I ain't trying to feel anything but your body. 
do the naughty cause it's only in our nature Liquor up and down, I'm trying to savor every flavor Something major, something never seen before Body unbelievable, body unbelievable So what's the deal when I slide through? I'm trying to vibe you, I know you're feeling me I can feel the chemistry, sexual energy Love it to an enemy, love it to an enemy Plain sight, can't see She said I love you baby, I tell the chicks the same We wine and dine for wine, but we both money gang It's very simple love you ain't fooling me But I love all the crazy shit you do to me These women be the death of me Maybe that's the motive Up early in the morning and we moaning Every morning She wanted bed and I wanted to Sexy with the attitude I ain't even mad at you Do your thing baby Trying to get a ring baby My life crazy but I like you too Make a player think about wiping you But we gon' see what tonight gon' do She dance naked for me Booty scraping on me Never feeling lonely Feeling like the only Once she got me sprung Toes curling in the bed Kiss me on the neck yeah, This is what she said She said I love you baby I tell the chicks the same We want it down the wine But we both run a game It's very simple Love. You ain't fooling me, but I love all the crazy shit you do to me. I let them know, I let them know. You gotta go, you gotta go. I let them know, I let them know. You gotta go, you gotta go.